Hi everybody, it's November 7, 2019. This just in, Fed warns climate change is a major threat to the economy. Wow. Okay. So I included this in my last video. The UN head, Secretary General Antonio Guterres, who said that the world is heading towards a fracture, a great fracture mostly due to the U.S.-China trade war. Well, if it's the trade war, Trump will be blamed. If it's climate change, Trump will be blamed. One of the primary reasons why I'm doing these videos is to say to Trump supporters, if you can't withdraw your support, if you can't take a step outside the matrix and really consider that Trump may just be playing you. I hope that you don't identify yourself. This economic crash is coming. Whether it comes this year, whether it comes 2020, 21, it's coming. And Trump may very well be the man who has been given the role to play the scapegoat and he's going to take his Trump supporters along with him we you have already seen since Trump was elected the violence against Trump supporters all right let me just show you some videos that I've pulled up recent videos now I think most of you agree that Americans have lost their mind we're a crazy people, a very disturbed people. Most do not understand that they have programmed minds, programmed by mainstream media and programmed into this dichotomous thinking that, oh God, I'm so sick of these comments from people that it just doesn't stop, man. Oh my God, dichotomous thinking up the wazoo. So everyone should have voted for Hillary. Tell me how wonderful she would have been. So if you post a video about Trump, immediately people think that you're for Hillary or you wanted Hillary or you voted for Hillary. They don't stop and think, wait, uh, maybe I should check out her channel. Maybe she's been posting well, for a while. Maybe she even posted during the Obama years. Maybe she posted when Hillary was campaigning. Maybe she doesn't even like Hillary. Oh, maybe she's completely out of the matrix and doesn't support any of them because, well, maybe she realizes that we don't have two parties, that we have one party and whether it's called Democrat or Republican, they've all been doing the same thing that brought us right to where we are living in a complete nightmare. Maybe. Could it be possible? Get out of your dichotomous thinking because it's dangerous. Because it's filled with presumption that, well, if you don't believe what I believe, then you must believe something that I don't like. Yeah. So, uh, this is what is currently happening. And any of you have a Trump 2020 bumper sticker on your car, walking around with a Trump sweatshirt or a Make America Great Again sweatshirt or MAGA hats. You might really want to consider doing that. You might not want to identify yourself in public anymore because Americans have lost it. They're very, very stressed out. Many have lived with chronic stress. When you live chronic st stress, you regress, you become very immature, and well, you've got that base thinking operating, and you're operating on a very primitive 
level, which, well, a whole lot of people have a violence in them and stress triggers it. But this whole Trump, uh, this whole uh, impeachment inquiry, which, well, it won't be resolved. And if it does get resolved, wow, doesn't matter which way, which way it gets resolved. I have no doubt we will see violent protests erupt. Anybody wearing a Trump uh, signature on their body or it's on their car or outside their home, you're a target. You, you have made yourself a target for violence. So, and it doesn't matter what age don't think because you're elderly it's going to save you if you're a woman don't think it's going to save you black white christian doesn't matter it's not going to save you they couldn't get that race war going but they're getting this going that was a scene last sec sorry Saturday, as supporters of President Donald Trump tried to get inside the Capitol to attend a rally. They were met by counter protesters spreading a much different message. Now, I grew up in a country where young men would never do this to a man much older. But we're seeing this all over. And again, it doesn't matter age because we're seeing older anti-Trump people attacking uh, Trump supporters. We've gone crazy. Please um, consider that your fellow Americans are not to be trusted. And I have spoken to a lot of subscribers who are telling me what's going on in their communities, whether it's with neighbors or people just within the community, family, friends, People are behaving in ways that we have never seen before. And no one cares what they do to other people. I see it. I've experienced it. And I don't know what's going on. But something very dark has invaded the American people. Civility, gone. It's gone. Really? Hitting a complete stranger? And nobody cares. No one cares. And when people watch these videos and they see uh, who is standing up for the Trump supporters, almost no one, those who want to attack Trump supporters are getting an awful lot of support. Something that the president was really proud of in his campaign was that it was self-funded and that he had a lot of small... I'd say civility is gone. Had a lot of small. It was that it was self-funded and that he had a lot of small.
squad members tonight, uh, one of the most uh, famous of those refugees, Congresswoman Alana Omar, um, who is from that area, uh, has a, quite a bit of support. I would imagine a lot of the folks that are there tonight outside and with the unrest uh, are folks who um, may be more uh, in, in, in her side of this equation. Um, not that they would be uh, violent, but just that there are people who are clearly rejecting the policies and this president himself. But that's what they did to a witness of their behavior. Yes, of course. Of course that's what they do. How does it feel? It gets stings like a motherfucker. <laughs> And you know, very often when you see this, you see the police not doing a thing. This isn't in the United States. Trump, when he visits countries, he gets out the anti and pro Trump supporters. And they too are reduced to a violence that I, I, it's uh, unbelievable what is happening around the world. They stole from those who were wearing MAGA hats or any kind of Trump um, signature. They stole them and burned them. This was at a Trump rally, I, I think in Lexington, Kentucky. And that is a YouTuber. They're stealing her camera. I saw the whole video that she has on YouTube and the police did nothing, did nothing. She told the police that she was attacked and they did nothing. And the uh, it was Caitlin Bennett, yeah, Lexington, Kentucky. So you can put in Caitlin Bennett and see what's on her channel. This lone Trump supporter is mobbed. How old are you, like 23? Antagonizing him. Antagonizing this man in a black hat. It's Trump hat. It's a Trump hat. Yeah! He took his hat. Antifa took his hat. All hats. Hats been thrown. Oh shit! There's his hat. That's right there. Oh shit! Oh, they keep throwing his hat around. All right. Fucking bullshit! Okay, it's like one guy against a 
fucking person. I'm standing up for people that are singled out. I would stand up for you if you were singled out too, sir. Absolutely. Very few people stand up. They're afraid. A mob surrounds one guy because he's a Trump supporter. Mobs don't have the ability to have independent, individual thinking processes going on. They all get caught up in the uh, just this frenzy and they don't care about the one person that they're attacking. We are looking at a complete and utter breakdown of morality, ethics, everything, civility. And if you don't go along with the opinion of the mob, that's enough to get you attacked. You could be a completely very decent moral person. It doesn't matter. Because if you don't believe what they believe, that's enough for you to get attacked. We're talking base thinking. We're talking primitive animals let loose. It's unbelievable. Shut up. So they chant, scream the same thing that, that anti-Trump people are screaming here. Everybody's been programmed. This is not in, obviously not in the United States. Trump has evoked an awful lot of feelings in people. I think he's been a success. All right, so, yeah, Jerome Powell. This was the article that I said I was going to get back to in the last video that I posted. The Fed's liquidity response is too little, too late, but that was always the plan. Altmarket.com, Brandon Smith. Check out this website because Brandon Smith has an awful lot of very good articles. So Jerome Powell, now the Fed chair, back in 2012, he warned that the markets are addicted to Fed stimulus and that any tightening of liquidity by the central bank, including cutting the balance sheet or raising interest rates, would cause a sharp reversal or crash. He becomes chairman and he ignores his own warning and tightens liquidity because he was instructed to. Now, you see presidents nominate a Fed chair. It's all a staged play. The Federal Reserve is a private bank. It's not a federal agency. So why do we have presidents nominating the Federal Reserve chair. They're just staging that for the American people to get them to believe it's a federal agency when it's not. It's a for-profit private bank. So why then Trump was instructed to nominate Powell? Why? Well, Jerome Powell is just another CFR globalist. A lot of them, Trump did not drain the swamp. A lot of them are in his cabinet or his economic advisors. They come from Wall Street. They come from the top vulture investment firms. 
Goldman Sachs, Rothschild, Carlyle Group, Blackstone, Citigroup, and the think tanks, globalist think tanks, the CFR, Brookings, Peterson Institute. Jerome Powell has continued the same Fed policies that for decades have been undermining our economy and destroying our middle class. And it continues. You know, Trump's criticism of Powell, staged play. You know, it's that Hegelian dialectic. You put up the two sides, they fight each other, and you think that, well, they must be against one another. No, they're just playing everybody. But they're working for the same team and they're working to achieve the same goals. And here it's crashing the old world order for the new world order. Janet Yellen, CFR member. Um, you know, ever since the Federal Reserve has been established, this is who has headed the Federal Reserve. Powell, a CFR member, he towed the Wall Street establishment line. He became very rich doing it. So did Janet Yellen. They're all working for the same team. Trump is also working for the same team. So you can read the end of this article he points out how there's a lot of evidence that what is going on is purposeful, that this crash is already operating. It's, there's nothing that one can do at this point except begin to talk about excuses for the crash, climate change. And it will be blamed on Trump. He pulled us out of the Paris Agreement when yeah, it did look. The Paris Agreement is being implemented already. It doesn't matter what he says. It matters what is taking place. So we have governors. We've got uh, over 500 mayors who have signed on to the Paris Agreement. Trump hasn't said anything about that. It's, well, the president, he's the one who signs international treaties, how is it that mayors and governors are signing on to a Paris Agreement? It's an international treaty. So why isn't Trump speaking out about that? Because it's all a staged play to get you to believe <clears throat> that Trump is really fighting for you when he's just playing a role, a role so, he goes into what's happening with the economy that, that shows us that the economy is not doing well. The recent steepening in the yield curve, <clears throat> excuse me, that's the point historically in which a sharp crash in fundamentals and marketplace takes place. Markets take place. The crash is happening now. Many people are falling off the cliff. Many more will. And how many of you are going to suffer the consequences? Because you will. You will. So the Fed wanted a crash. And the Central Bank of Central Banks is BIS. BIS, Bank for International Settlements. It dictates policy decisions to all member banks. It's the central bank of central banks and is the central global manager of all national central banks. You think Trump doesn't know about BIS? Of course he does. And you know, taking that instruction, he's doing exactly Fed, uh, Jerome Powell is doing exactly what he 
is instructed to do. So many, so many are um, puppets. So there's a narrative that the Fed is just this bumbling Fed and all of the criticism that Trump gives about Powell. And he talks about, you know, what Powell is doing. But then at the same time, he talks about how great the economy is. You're getting such um, conflicting messages from Trump. It's amazing that people actually listen to him. But uh, we have a supposedly populist president that attacks the Fed regularly, while at the same time taking full credit for the bumble, for the bubble in markets, sorry. Donald Trump boasts daily of his influence in markets, employment, GDP. He does this even though he called the economic recovery a bubble during his campaign. He now owns the health of the economy, and by extension, he has given the central banks and the globalists a perfect gift. He has set himself and his supporters up as scapegoats for the crash. And if you're wondering why the globalists stalled for 10 years for crashing the system, well, they needed, they needed the scapegoat. They have it now with Trump. And he may have very well given his, okay, I'll be the scapegoat throughout my entire adult life. As a New Yorker, Trump was all over you know, getting into these public asinine fighting matches with people. He doesn't care what you think. He doesn't care about the criticism that he gets. He just cares about getting the job done. So, um, if they launched the crisis a few years ago, they would have been blamed for it. The growing contingent of liberty activists immune to the scam and immune to the kabuki theater involving Donald Trump might be able to turn the tide enough to force the hand of the elites. Maybe they'll back off. Uh, maybe, you know, they can drag out the economic downturn longer. But we have too many people actually believing Trump is real. So the crash is about us. Um, it is about affecting changes to the public psychology, making us more receptive to extreme globalization. If they don't care what we think, then why spend trillions of dollars and endless hours and manpower trying to influence our perception? They need the vast majority of us to consent to the new world order. Otherwise, they will have failed. Blaming it on Trump, well, the trade war you have the head of the United Nations saying that it's the trade war. You have the New York Fed saying that it's climate change. And Trump, well, he comes into office and he doesn't buy the climate change. You know, a lot of what we hear from Trump is actually the truth. But it's also to pull in liberty-minded people, people who are wanting the Constitution, wanting their freedom. But at the same time, he's also behaving in ways that one could understand that he doesn't believe in the Constitution. He violates it all the time. Red flag laws. He, come, he, comes, he campaigns about you know, starting the... Um, establishing a, a commission on vaccine safety. And then, what, two years after being in office, he then says you know, that people should listen and, and get vaccinated. That there's some, what has happened with Common Core? Nothing. Campaign vigorously on getting rid of Common Core. Nothing. How about that Hillary Clinton that he was going to be investigating? and the Clinton Foundation, nothing. Um, he hasn't done anything to help us. The wall, well, as I have posted many videos, that wall has been used to 
uh, and it, since Ronald Reagan. Ah, we need a wall, we need a wall, we need a wall. But we have an awful lot crossing the, bound, uh, the border. Nothing has changed. He just recently came out and said that he thinks we need to get into more wars. Don't remember exactly what he said. Syria, we're pulling troops out. Ah, we're sending more troops in. Oh, and he comes out and says, essentially what he said, we're going to steal Syria's oil. We're going to guard it with our U.S. military. An independent, sovereign nation. I mean, he, he couldn't be more obvious, blatant, that he's not doing anything to help us, but doing everything to hurt us. But then he'll come out and say the things that people want to hear. All right, so my next video is going to be Trump cannot be anti-globalist while working with global elites. No. He is part of the pack. And he is playing a role. And this article is very good. So you can click on the link and read it for yourself. Or you can click on my video when I post it. The Trump phenomenon and how it relates to the globalist narrative. I, Brandon Smith concluded that Trump would be president based on the fact that having a supposedly hardcore nationalist and populist conservative in the White House over the next four years would in fact be highly beneficial to the elites. Yeah, Donald Trump is a puppet of the elites. He could have simply been a convenient scapegoat for the coming crash. Today, it is obvious that he is indeed controlled opposition. And that's why I say our country is just getting more and more disturbed with an awful lot of violent people getting triggered by simply seeing, you know, a MAGA hat or, you know, anything that has to do with Trump. So all of you who have these kinds of sweatshirts or MAGA hats, Trump 2020 bumper sticker, Trump 2020 a uh, poster on your lawn seriously considering consider removing that identification because it is a target it is a target and the left is crazy far more crazy than the right but at this point, anybody stuck in the matrix and not seeing what Trump is doing in his role as the, the great inciter, as he does talk an awful lot of truth, but watch what he does, watch who he's around. He's playing everyone. And the violence between the red and the blue teams. Think about soccer and the you know, riots that break out at soccer matches. You can imagine that this is a soccer match. People are out of their minds now. I wouldn't identify myself as anything to anyone because Americans cannot be trusted. All links are below.